Okay, here it is. This is the Bug Attack Rapid Fire. It is from X-Shot. I think it's a Zulu is the name of the company that makes it. It is a, we'll call it off-brand for Nerf. And it closely resembles, at least it's an orange front barrel, uh, the Hammer Shot. Six shots instead of five. This is 3D printed, so ignore that for now. Now, if you notice, it has a prime like the Fire Strike, yet it has a revolver front. Very good handle. I liked a lot about it. It felt a little cheaper, but for $10 at Dollar General, I figured it can't be that good. I look online, I check a Facebook Nerf forum, and they're saying how with a little bit of work, it's better than a hammer shot. That can't be right. So here's me for the first time opening up a rapid fire and seeing if it's actually better than a hammer shot. Okay, here we go with the unboxing. Now, apparently this rapid fire or um, bug attack rapid fire has zip ties at the back, unlike Busby, which seems to have just string wrapped around. <laughs> Throw my knife around the room. I have to start wearing safety glasses. So I do like this better with the zip ties. It's a little more safe. We held on. Okay, here's the blaster. Feels a little cheaper than a hammer shot, but let's see how it primes. Not bad. Considering the air restrictor is still in, that sounds like it's got some juice to it. Here's the fire strikes prime. And you can hear how much the air restrictor really limits what it sounds like. Sounds like a lot of dead air in here, too. So let me crack this guy open yeah, and we'll look at it. A little bit. So 57 stock is not terrible for an off-brand blaster. All right, another shot. 52. 71. 70. 61. So it seemed as though... The fewer the darts that were in here, the more the power increased. All right. Okay, now I'm going to try a fire strike using the same darts it came with. Or the rapid fire uh, bug attack blaster came with. 65. Let's get a couple shots for a good reading. 67. So the other one were kind of all over the place. I got 71 to 51. So it's averaging somewhere in the low 60s, and this is getting about... Yeah, this is getting about 65. So the fire strike, unmodified fire strike, is performing just slightly better than this guy. All right, we've got one more comparison before I move on here. Here is a hammer shot with the air restrictor removed. Yes, this is the same hammer shot that I broke at the NIC event, but I just put the older um, hammer on it and it shoots okay. So, all right, here we go. 73 with no air restrictor, that's a hammer shot. And now we're going to try, that was a coup start. Now we're going to try coup starts in the rapid fire bug attack blaster. 66, 61, 70. A cosmetic piece to a brute from Busby. It ended up being the actual cover for the top entire part of the blaster. So if I had removed it, all the internals would have been exposed for the rest of the life of the blaster. Yeah, the entire roof of it is actually that top blue piece. So you can't do anything really with it. Yep, there it is. It does come off. Excellent. I don't have to have this blue ooze thing on the top. So that can go away. Nice clean space. So, heck, if I wanted to, you can already see that's a great place to probably glue on a tack rail if you wanted one. So if I wanted to glue like a integration piece, end of a barrel, have it underneath, now it would take a lot of space to do that. But and of course, as I prime that back, I just pull it apart, <laughs> which is not good because there are still some screws I have not gotten out so far. So there you go, plunger assembly, trigger. Man, this looks an awful light like the internals of a Nerf blaster, even down to this guy right here. So I'm gonna do some. Uh, search foo on the internet because I've already told you guys I am more casual nerfer slash enthusiast who loves this stuff and he's learning. So we're going to find out what it takes to remove the air restrictor out of that guy and see if I can improve the spring with something I have in stock. All right, okay, right so back. it appears as though it has the type of air restrictor that I've seen in other blasters like a hammer shot or a strong arm. So it looks like if I can drill out those four pegs, I'll be able to remove that piece and we'll be good to go. Also, this seems to be something akin to a fire strike or a long shot kind of spring. So as soon as I unscrew the end of this, I should be able to put a better spring on top of this guy. 
so I'm going to have something I can use for this. I have heard a recon spring, but I'd be kind of afraid to put the really nasty big recon spring in it. Um, this wasn't exactly a thrift blaster. I'd like to have this work for a while at $10, but eh, I'll give it a shot. End of here, two screws. Once I get those guys out, I'll be able to put this back in. And with this much room for the spring, I won't have to fight it like you do in a long shot. And I'll be putting silicone grease around the plunger tube. Okay, it is eerie how similar the spring from Orange Mod Works for a recon looks like the spring for the rapid fire on for the bug attack blaster, except it's smaller. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit all of this in because I just think this would cause damage or cause problems priming. I'm going to try this first. Okay, and... All right, so instead of being patient and charging my drill back in, I kind of just wedged it out with some needle nose pliers, kind of bent it, and then pushed through <laughs> after I cut loose the teeth that held it, the air restrictor in place. The spring is eerily, if I hold on to it, eerily similar to what you get out of Mavericks when you take the air restrictor out of those guys. So really weak, nothing they can really do with it, so it goes in the trash. Okay, leftover silicone grease. From an orange mod works kit go around the plunger tube I'm gonna do okay, this something now tricky is there to put this back together yes that is an entire old alpha trooper screen cram spring crammed into that uh, plunger tube i don't know how long i'll leave it in there but uh, the back of the trigger when you put it back together has to go inside the trigger catch and it popped the spring right into my face which would have been hilarious if i had it on camera all right once that gets this guy back together, let's we'll see. Those how it of you wondering, yep, I had this guy upside down because that groove has to be open for the trigger catch to go into it. And yes, that's the entire spring I have jammed into this guy. All right, all right. In. Plan B. <laughs> I'm going to take an old Maverick spring and include it with the Rapid uh, Fire's own spring, and we'll see if these two can coexist. All right, I'm going to try these two. Okay, now. this time with the Maverick spring in, I was able to get the trigger catch back into the groove. All right, let's get the trigger in and get this puppy firing. Right, she's back together. Just two screws right now until I can test it out. I got a, the worn out deletes. Let's see how it fires with the Maverick spring added and the air restrictor out. Okay, it slam fires now. Yep, it's not catching. And it's basically barely slammed. This is a neat trick I did an accident. This handle comes off from the top green shell, which is awesome. I think I'm going to paint this guy before I put it back together. Or maybe once I get it test firing correctly. But it's locking in both the trigger and the trigger catch. So I can actually take out the assembly if I want to. Hold that guy in. I can even leave these screws in the handle. And get One thing this I don't like doing for revolvers is taking the dart post out. But there is something that will catch it. So the dart won't go all the way through like it does on a strong arm when I try it. So I'm going to take them out hey, you right get to now. learn from my mistakes. I tried to prime it with the top shell not on. And yeah, this guy shot right out of the casing. So as you can see here, there are three prongs. Which this piece, the tooth that holds it in place. If I can get it to calm down for a second as I put the little guy back in. And that will go back down like that. So if that happens to you, it's not the end of the world. It's not glued in. It fits in loosely. So yeah, yeah, it's going to go back in now. Don't prime it with the case open. 